The FLSA stands for the Fair Labor Standards Act. The law regulates minimum wage, overtime, equal pay, child labor, and record keeping. Failing to comply with the FLSA could result in employee lawsuits and severe fines levied by the Wage and Hour Division of the Department of Labor. Many states have also enacted FLSA laws. Employers need to comply with both state and federal statutes. Let's take a look at what you need to know. The law divides employees into those who are exempt from wage and overtime requirements and those who are not. In order for an employee to be classified as exempt, his or her job must pass three tests. The employee must be paid at least the minimum weekly or yearly dollar amount as mandated by the Department of Labor, be paid on a salary basis, perform specific job duties. These specific exempt job duties are broken into five classifications, executive, professional, administrative, outside sales, and some computer-related jobs. Executive job duties must include supervision of two or more employees and input on personnel decisions such as hiring, work duties, or promotions. Professional job duties include well-educated specialists like attorneys, doctors, teachers, architects, accountants, and nurses, to name a few. Administrative job duties must require an exercise of discretion and judgment with the authority to make independent business decisions. For example, human resource, finance, payroll, marketing and advertising professionals are all generally exempt. Computer-related job duties need to include performance of high-level work that involves significant decision-making. Examples could include the duties of network, internet, and database administrators. Lastly, outside sales professionals whose primary job duties are sales conducted outside of the office are exempted. In addition to these five classifications, there are certain professions that are specifically exempted. Some computer programming jobs, employees at hospitals and nursing homes, fire and police departments, seasonal and recreational establishments, agricultural businesses, rail carriers, and domestic employees. These professions have specific rules that are different than general FLSA law. If your organization has employees in any of these fields, it is important to research the FLSA website or to seek legal advice from an employment law attorney for particular regulations regarding these employees. All other employees not exempted by the five classifications or by specific exemption are considered non-exempt and therefore covered by the Act. The FLSA requires employers to pay non-exempt workers at least the federal minimum wage. Many states and cities have enacted minimum wages that are higher than the federal minimum. Employers must stay well informed with local laws to remain compliant. In addition, employers must pay non-exempt employees one and a half times their regular hourly wage for work over 40 hours in a week. Employers are not required to pay exempt employees for overtime. Non-exempt employees cannot waive their rights to pay under wage and hour law. When they work, they must be paid for that work, regardless of whether the work is done voluntarily. Even employee work that was not approved by management must be paid. If the work is done, it must be paid for, regardless of the circumstances. For instance, non-exempt employees should never eat lunch at their desks. If non-exempt employees work during a lunch break, under the law, they must be paid for that work. If non-exempt employees are on call and significant restrictions are placed on their activities while on call, they must be paid for those hours. Employers who charge employees for shortages, damages, tools, and uniforms must be careful that these deductions don't push employees' wages under the federal minimum wage in any pay period. 
Otherwise, the employer must pay the employee enough to make up the difference. If employers want to pay their workers who receive tips the lower tipped employee wage, they must make sure that these workers receive at least the federal minimum wage when hourly wage and tips are combined. If they don't, then employers must make up the difference. Certain full-time students, student learners, apprentices, and workers with disabilities may be paid less than minimum wage with special certificates obtained from the Department of Labor. Employees under 20 years of age may be paid a lower federally mandated minimum wage for the first 90 calendar days of employment. Employers must be vigilant about recording and documenting all hours worked. Employers must define the work week and keep detailed records on hours worked, hourly rate when overtime is accrued, and deductions from or additions. Employees must be paid for actual hours worked. Paying employees based on scheduled hours rather than actual hours violates the law. Employers must keep payroll, sales and purchase records for three years. Records by which wage computations are made, such as time cards, should be kept for two years. Independent contractors are not employees and are not covered by the FLSA. The main factor that determines whether a person is an independent contractor or not is control. The more control an employer has over the job duties and schedule of a worker, the more likely the person will be deemed an employee rather than an independent contractor. If the person works like an employee and gets paid like an employee, the Department of Labor will probably designate that person as an employee and not an independent contractor. Proper designation is important. In recent years, the IRS has cracked down on companies who have improperly designated workers as independent contractors, and mistakes can be very expensive. The youth provisions in the FLSA protect minors from conditions detrimental to their health and from situations that would limit educational opportunities. An employee must be at least 16 years old to work in most non-farm jobs and at least 18 years old to work in non-farm jobs declared hazardous by the Secretary of Labor, such as mining, manufacturing, or the operation of heavy machinery. Children 14 and 15 years old may work in non-hazardous jobs between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. so long as they work less than three hours on a school day work less than 18 hours in a school week, work less than 8 hours on a non-school day, work less than 40 hours in a non-school week. Children who work in businesses owned by their parents are generally exempted from these rules. Violating FLSA law can have severe consequences. Employees who willfully disregard FLSA law are subject to criminal penalties, including fines and imprisonment. Employers who violate FLSA law may be sued or fined by the Department of Labor and or face litigation filed directly by individuals harmed by the violations. FLSA-related lawsuits have become the most common labor lawsuit, topping over 8,000 cases filed every year. A solid understanding and execution of the law is the number one defense in avoiding disputes or litigation.